Hello there and welcome to the next version of the preset fader. There are some uh, smaller tweaks and additions working wise. So maybe let's start with the preset side, uh, fader itself for now. So internally uh, I change a little bit of, of the working how the presets fade. So they are no longer because before they were bound to the FPS number. And now they are uh, set actually to uh, be dynamically referencing the current cook time. So even if you have like really um, uh, fluctuating FPS, uh, they will still be on time and pretty smooth. So um, this is not so important. Basically for you, it just makes it everything smoother. So we already know the way of uh, dropping parameters. So you can just uh, add parameters to the to the stack. And uh, but you can now also just add a component with custom parameters and drop it in, and they will also be automatically added to the stack of the recorder. Um, <clears throat> Now, when we record or store a preset, it will uh, no longer be auto-cleared of the uh, stack, but you can enable the clear stack on record, but uh, let's not do this for now. So, uh, just as an example, to see that everything works, we will uh, store the blah 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 preset, and then we will change some of these values, and. Uh, this values, and call it blah 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 two. Uh, we will store this one, and now if we recall our preset, everything works fine. You can now set it actually to a time of zero uh, and to to a value above three hundred in seconds. Uh, if you do it, set it to zero, it will like instantly snap. So, but if you set it to one second. Yeah, let's just select blah 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 too. You see it smoothly fades in a, in a second. Basically smoothly. But uh, yeah, you can now export your uh, the presets currently saved. So let, let's just uh, Export it, it will be saved as a JSON file. Here it is called a test JSON, so let's just override it. And now if we press import, uh, we will be again here. There's a, the, the test JSON, and if we have a look at it, <coughs> so you can see we have the preset name. So we have this, and then you have the operators. And inside of the operators, you have the different parameters. Works really nice. You can change the values inside of this uh, inside, and uh, yeah, it just works really nice. So let's uh, close this one because we don't need it anymore. We now can have a look at the what the fuck? Okay, let's just ignore this one. <coughs> Uh, we let's now have a look at the dashboard, which is like the first companion. So the view, uh, it's already possible to use it, but again, uh, a little bit of, of stuff. So what we can now do is we have the different modes. So recall, uh, record, and update are pretty clear. Uh, delete also, and uh, label is also pretty interesting. So what we can do is when the parameters are already in the stack, so this is why I removed the, the auto clear, um, we can just record a preset so like this, and then it's green. And now let's change some values. Let me change the fill color. And uh, so let's record the second one. And then if we go into recall mode, we can just Recall them and give them a time. If we want to label them, we just select the label mode, click, and then we can say, uh, <clears throat> let's just call it yellow. And now uh, in the writing, just states yellow. 
if you copy the dashboard and you want to have new IDs, new preset IDs, just just press new buttons, and then they they will get new IDs. Because you can see if if we have a look into our component here, <coughs> the presets will just get a um, UUID, so they are really yeah. So it's not really human readable. This is why you can label them in the on the dashboard. Sorry for the rough. Uh, so the next, <clears throat> the third one. So maybe that's just. Uh, yeah, let's keep them in. So the third component for this is the queue list. As with the preset dashboard, <clears throat> you have to define the preset fader component. Uh, so let's have a look inside. So um, we can just delete our queues that were from before. We have to define what is the first index of the queue we want to use. So in this case, we want to add a queue one, and we so we just press the <clears throat> add queue button. And here we can choose a preset we want to use. So let's first use a blah 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 two. Give it a time of zero seconds and say starting point. This is just for for us an info. Uh, then we go to uh, blah 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 two and maybe one second. No comment. And then we have a maybe go to yeah this strange number <clears throat> and now if yeah, let's, let's just keep this open so we want to go there to our starting point then we press just press go and now we have this queue currently selected and now if we press go you see okay in one second we got to uh, the next one now if we press go again we go to the second one if we want to go back to the start, just uh, hit go. So now we realize, oh, mm, I see I actually want to have blah, blah, blah after our Q3. It's no problem. We're just uh, going to change the, the Q ID and it will realign. And then we press go and then we go to Q3 and then we just go to Q4. <clears throat> you can, uh, I can't do it right now. Uh, also, just uh, press the spacebar when this one is activated. But when I press the spacebar, now you need to be in perform mode because otherwise uh, I would just pause touch design and then it wouldn't work anymore. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. That's uh, basically it with the three components. You can uh, just download them and uh, put them in and have fun with this component.